Let's try this again. Who wants to be on TV today? Here we go. Trigger warning. Spoiler alert. Call me zaddy. You guys are experiencing the Tom Kelly show. Uh, I am recording this on Saturday night, July 16th at 8, 11 p.m. I should be out headlining at a fancy comedy club, but I'd rather do a podcast with you guys right now. Uh, there is so much to catch up on. First, I called myself a zaddy, Z-A-D-D-Y. Uh, a zaddy is a sexually attractive man, especially an older one who is fashionable and charismatic. Uh, I got the word from an article that uh, our comedian friend Hannah Burner wrote uh, in one of them fancy L magazines. I don't know, whatever it was, but she wrote about her husband was a zaddy and folks, uh, I am feeling zaddy-ish. That's why I'm wearing the blazer for you. Uh, and, you know, you guys probably can't see it. And especially if you're listening to audio version, you really can't see it. Uh, I have like a pre-zit on my nose. So my nose is kind of like... Uh, it's kind of bubbling on, I guess, the right nostril. There's a zit that will pop big time tomorrow. So right now, because I kind of like have this nice tan and a nice blazer on, I don't really look like I have a zit that's going to pop. Instead, I kind of look like the drunk uncle who just went three too many. And I, I, I'm somewhere, I think the blazer puts me in the fun drunk uncle mode where it's like, hey, I love you kids, as opposed to angry drunk uncle mode, which is always like, ah, listen, hey, your, your, your life is pop, your life is crap. Uh, and yes, I am impersonating real drunk uncles there. Uh, but you are experiencing the Tom Kelly show. So much to catch up on. I made a list. Um, I have today on the show uh, things I don't want to hear from beautiful people. Uh, we have signs you're having a 2022 moment. Uh, I have an update on uh, the screaming I was hearing behind me on the brick wall in my apartment. Uh, and I'm going to start with an update on uh, One Republic uh, at Good Morning America and I guess my own stand-up comedy audiences last night. Uh, folks, I mean, you guys have taken the roller coaster with me. Uh, uh, I don't know if doing the Good Morning America concerts is really a step forward in my career, but it is a beautiful step backward to things that I love. Uh, it's like going to summer camp with my favorite crew guys and girls. Uh, Good Morning America puts on the best concerts in Central Park. And uh, yeah, man, it, it's, a, it's a fun group of people. I love the stage manager there. Uh, I love uh, Ginger Z. Uh, I love the production people there. It, it, it's, a nice, uh, it's a nice step. Uh, the band yesterday was One Republic. And man, they attract a fun, positive crowd. Uh, what was nice about the One Republic crowd was they weren't just there for One Republic. They also played ball on the TV things. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, yeah, that's right. I would say it. They kind of participated. My favorite audience member of the day was a seven-year-old boy named Jack. Um, and, and for those of you who have uh, seen me do warm-up before, uh, the difference between warm-up and real stand-up is... I find for TV audiences, you know, you could do your jokes, but then if the audience comes back, your jokes are blown, and that's going to come into play later in this story. Um, and then the other thing uh, is, uh, I think with warm-up crowds, and I think this is the gift of my stand-up, is uh, I'm good at creating moments that make you feel like you are in the moment, that this moment is special, that it's not just the show that's happening around the country, you're in on something special. And the way I do that is generally finding an, a moment, an off-camera moment we can all unite behind, uh, or a great audience member. And, you know, it's a lot of, like, fishing. It's a lot of deep-sea fishing, uh, those moments. So today, that moment was a seven-year-old kid named Jack. Jack knew all the lyrics to a couple of One Republic songs, uh, and this is Jack. Be 
And Jack also was funny. I had a, a, a great moment with him where I had him on stage. I interviewed him. Uh, have you ever been on TV before, Jack? And he's like, yes, I have. What show have you been on, Jack? He says, good morning, America. I say to Jack, it would have been funnier if you said cops. He just pauses and stares at me. So I'm like, let's try this again, Jack. What show were you on before? And then he says, good morning, America. Again, crowd laughs because he wouldn't play ball with me. And the crowd saw my disappointment. Anyway, Jack's parents, if you're listening, uh, you raised a good kid. Thank you for sharing him with the audience. My second favorite uh, audience member from the concert um, is a woman whom we will call Trixie. Uh, Trixie was my flight attendant on a, one of my recent flights to Los Angeles. I'm in the middle of my show, uh, and she runs up to the stage screaming, Oh my God. Oh my God. You, I was your flight attendant. I was your flight attendant. And I gave her a nice shout out before the show. Uh, you know, she was, I forget what drove me nuts on the, this particular flight to Los Angeles. I think it was the one I took in March and we traded Instagram info. Actually, we traded Instagram info and, uh, and I did this nice video shout out for her. I brought her onto the stage and we did a shout out in front of the whole crowd. So she was fine at Good Morning America. She was great at Good Morning America. Uh, and I promoted where I was performing at the LOL Comedy Club that night. And the LOL Comedy Club, I, 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 I don't like telling people about the club. It's a great club. It's actually a great place to see a show if you show up by accident. Uh, and I always say... We talked about this last week. Uh, there's the bar you go to, and then there's the bar you wind up at. LOL is the comedy club you wind up at. You don't go there on purpose, but you can have a great time there. Uh, and frankly, it's either hit or miss with the shows. Uh, for me as a comic, it is the wild, wild west of comedy because you really don't know if you're going to get great audience members, tourists looking for a good time, or people who genuinely want to shoot you. There are sometimes, you know, tourists who come in from Times Square, and then sometimes you look at the audience and you wonder if they're evading law enforcement. You know, that's the LOL Comedy Club audience. So God bless uh, the, the flight attendant, whom we will, we will call her for the rest of the show, the flight attendant, like the HBO Max TV show. Flight attendant is in the front row of the show, and she, uh, as, you know, ladies and gentlemen, Tom Kelly, I walk onto the stage, and within 10 seconds of me being on stage, she rushes the stage and hands me a cookie and a sack of nuts. And it turns out she was just talking during every comedian's set and did not get the hint. And I guess I sort of mentioned this thing about repeating a joke or whatever. Um, I felt I was, you know, I repeated a joke that I've told a million times. It's viral on my TikTok. Uh, the joke is, uh, I went to college in Connecticut. You ever hear a yell? Long pause. No. Well, I went to school down the block from there. Quinnipiac University. Joke went viral on TikTok. And listen, especially when you see me do stand-up, I'm always kind of crowd surfing. And I go to the oldie but goodies when I feel I need them. So this is a moment where I needed an oldie but goodie. And I have her audio. And I'm putting on the headphones right now. So you guys can listen to me. Listen to this. You guys can watch me listen to this and react to it with me facially. Uh, I recorded it with my iPhone, but I did not record the video. I just have the audio. But anyway, this is me. Ready? Let me just hit the little thingy there, and it should come up now. <laughs> you know what I love? You like, there's like a pause when I make fun of her. She's like, she might kick your ass, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I like you're 20. You go to college? Yeah. Yeah, I went to college too. You ever hear a Yale? Yeah, well, I'm school right down the block. Don't give me their punchline. Now that I like you. Like no, now that's asshole. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, you know what? This is why I don't tell people where to fuck I'm working. Um, I love you. I mean, you know what's funny though is it's bad enough the cops are here and it's my friends who are harassing me. Um, Sorry, baby. Welcome to New York. All right. Tell the same joke twice in one day. Just Says the woman who gives the same flight attendant speech three times a day in the same plane. 
for the same woman who puts guys who look like him in the emergency exit row. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, she's not getting the hint to shut the hell up. And the worst part is, she follows me off stage. I sent her the video that I just showed you guys, and she still didn't get the hint. I hope she was really drunk, but it's just one of those things where, you know, uh, you know, uh, just took the wind out of my sails. Uh, and then the other comedians are all busting my chops because they're all like, Tom, you told that person to come see you here? I mean, actually, my friend Francisco Aldorando was very charming about it. She was good-hearted. She thought she was just part of the fun, but she wasn't getting it. Even when I specifically told her, please shut the hell up. Uh, so she was good-hearted, blah, 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 but my least favorite, Arr, you know, making er face people. Uh, and, and listen, when you get into that, though, of Tom, why don't you like it when your friends come to see you do stand-up? Because, again, it, that's the moment right there. To her, I was not a comedian. To her, I was just the guy from 36D, which is the seat I was sitting in, not my boob size. Anyway, there you go. So I thought that would be a good moment of a good behind the scenes moment of where I'm at. Um, I'll tell you this. Uh, I was listening to another podcast with beautiful cheerleaders uh, and beauty queens. I love, and it's funny. People, always, you guys bust my chops. You're like, Tom, what do you love beauty queens? And I'll tell you something. I, I, my cousin Joe said something like this to me once, and I, and I, and I think it's how I feel about beauty queens is uh, I, I celebrate the winners and I identify with the losers. I really do, especially with beauty queens, because it's like a year of hard work. You have that big moment. You put yourself out there, and you either got it or you don't. You know, like out of Miss America, there's one winner with a crown and 49 losers, 49 good-looking losers who have to go back to their home state. You know, I don't know. But, I, but anyway, what was funny was I'm listening, and I'm not going to name the show right now uh, because uh, – I don't know, they might think this is mean, but I don't think this is mean, but I do think this is mean, but I want to say it anyway. I was listening to a former beauty queen talk about how her mom told her every day that she was beautiful on the inside. And that's just not something I want to hear good-looking people talk about, okay? All right? Being good-looking on the inside is my thing, okay? If you are just as good-looking as me on the inside, if you are just as beautiful as me on the inside, what do I got, baby? I got nothing, all right? You know, I want to hear good-looking people talk about, I don't know, how it's so hard that they're good-looking, that they have axe murderers showing up at their door. I want good-looking people to talk about things that make me not want to be good-looking, okay? I grew up with a lot of insecurities, people. All right. Uh, I, I don't need like, I, I mean, inner beauty matters more than, you know, like, I mean, they, ah, like, I don't need to see outwardly people like if inner beauty really married that, 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 that. See, what about stuttering outwardly stuttering right there? OK, if inner beauty really mattered, beautiful people. OK, if inner beauty really mattered, you'd see a lot of outwardly beautiful people who are beautiful on the inside dating some inner beautiful guys who are outwardly ugly. Am I saying that right? I don't know. Uh, but I have my list of things I don't want to hear good-looking people talk about. Uh, I don't want to hear that inner beauty matters more than beauty from good-looking people. I don't want to hear good-looking people say, I don't have to work out. Really? Oh, that's all natural too? <sighs> you know? Uh, I don't want to hear good-looking people say, I don't have to wear makeup. And then, you know what? The one that I really hate good-looking people saying is, I don't want to hear good-looking people saying, I get my clothes at the thrift store. Stay out of the thrift store, good-looking people, all right? The thrift store is for me. The thrift store is for guys like me who need the extra money and savings because people don't buy me drinks. Yeah, there you go. Thrift store savings are for guys who need to pay for their own drinks when going out. Uh, thrift store savings is for guys and girls who need to pay for their own drinks when they're going out. All right. I, I, there you go.
And then, uh, and then I guess the other one, the other topic I had for the radio stations, which was uh, uh, good-looking people working out. Do you get more or less motivated to work out when you're around good-looking people? And I do get slightly more motivated. Uh, I, I go to a gym that is for old and out of shape people. The, the good-looking people are starting to come back. It, it goes all these gyms go through cycles, but I go through one of the equinoxes, and I swear there are times where I go there and I am the best looking man there and it's kind of hard to be at the gym and when you're the best looking guy at two in the afternoon and you look around you say yeah you know I don't need to lift that extra weight Uh, these guys got to keep up with me that's how I feel when I work out at Equinox Uh, you know the rest of you need to keep up with this Uh, all right I am I'm all over people Um, you look great you guys uh We've had them on the show before. Uh, they haven't had me on their show, but whatever. Uh, Carla Marie and Anthony, they were on Elvis Duran. They had, they had their own radio show in Seattle. Uh, in fact, you if, actually, that might be an attainable two people for you to annoy on Twitter to get me on their show. The Carla Marie and Worst Anthony on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, they have a, a great line of merchandising that you should check out. They make shirts that say, you look great. And I was thinking of a Tom Kelly show t-shirt that just says, you look fine. I mean, how many, how often, like, I mean, you guys, uh, especially my friends who are listening to the show, they know it. How often do I look in the mirror and say, I don't know, uh, I got a big zit. Oh, I started a show this way. Oh my gosh, I got a big zit on my nose and uh, uh, I uh, look like uh, the drunk uncle. And then someone has to say to me, Tom, you look fine. How great would that to be to have it on a mug or a t-shirt? Maybe I'll work on that. But when we get more of a following, there's no need. And I already can tell Jacob Lee Downey is getting ready. He's firing up the merch store right now. Honestly, man, I'd rather everybody, you keep your money for right now. I'll ask you for money and favors another time. I need your favors and your time uh, more than uh, the $2 I'll make on a t-shirt, okay? But yeah, Tom, you look fine. You look fine. Um, I gave you, did I give you guys the update on the wall? No, I didn't. Um, So... The brick wall right here, it leads into the next building. And I played the clip on the show a few months ago. uh, And we couldn't tell what language it was. Uh, It was around every afternoon you'd start hearing someone yell, and you couldn't tell if it was somebody making love. Uh, There's a new Japanese restaurant downstairs. You wondered if it was some sort of insane uh, uh, prep uh, and in the end, I met somebody, my friend Ronnie Polidoro's girlfriend, uh, uh, Ty, uh, Taya, Tina, Terry, uh, Trixie. Uh, anyway, she used to live in the building. And I'm like, hey, Maya, Maya, not, not no T at all, Maya. Uh, Maya said uh, that it was an old lady uh, who did not like the health aid that showed up at four o'clock. So it was the changing of the guards. So they must have been on some sort of four to four shift or something because that was the only time you'd really hear it. You'd hear it in the afternoon. <laughs> anyway, um, the, the noises has gone away in the last few weeks. So uh, either she likes the new home health aid or she's dead. Either way, it's quieter. Uh, I've asked this on uh, my personal Facebook and Instagram. Uh, What is your 2022 moment? Uh, Or what is a 2022 moment? Like, do you remember, like, it was an expression during 2020. If you had something going well and then it just fell apart, that was a 2020 moment. Uh, What is a 2022 moment? For me, a 2022 moment is something that feels like it's the beginning of something. Uh, For me, a 2022 moment means beginning the comeback. For me, a 2022 moment means embracing the adventure, embracing the setbacks, and planting the seeds. And uh, for a great 2023. Because I really do believe that uh, 2023 is going to be my year. Uh, yeah, 
Not bad. We're at 19 minutes. Uh, you know what? I, I think that's a good way to end on. I think heartfelt is not a bad way to end on. Uh, you know what's a better way to end on, ladies and gentlemen? The Magic Mirror. We have not done that in a while. Let me celebrate some of you guys who have been supporting the show. Uh, Magic Mirror time. I see Gail. I see Kathy. I see Melissa. I see Hugh. These are all people who have been interacting with my social media, Tom Kelly Show. Uh, they have been uh, sending me notes, Tom Kelly Show at me.com. Uh, who else do I see? I see Brett Walker. I see Matt Mariani. I see Ryan. I see Templeton. Uh, do I really have a follower named Templeton? Um, I see Anne, I see Bridget, I see Lauren, I see Jack Squitcherini, I see Tyler's Hot Mom, I see Jacob Lee Downey, I see Larry Frisa, I see Carla, I see Incogfredo, Fred the Mailman, uh, I see Andrew Garcia, Broken Hand Wind, and most importantly, I see you. New episodes Mondays and Wednesdays, except for when there's not, but I'm, I'm trying my best to stick with that. And then uh, little morsels of new content across the board at Tom Kelly's show. Thank you guys for being a part of this. Uh, and we'll talk more uh, next week. Good night, New York.